Welcome, I'm Daniel Carlton, artist in residence where the Harlem is. In fact, for 20 years, I've been part of the Community Works and New Heritage Theater family, helping to celebrate the cultural history of Harlem through school programs, landmark exhibition and multicultural workshops and performances. Today, we continue our The Harlem is Healing Dialogue series, beginning weeks after the pandemic broke out. Community Works interviewed over 40 honorees who were helping Harlem heal from the ravages of the pandemic to find ways to reduce violence and, and, and hate and to seek more equitable racial justice efforts. Their stories were posted on Facebook, Instagram, and now a part of Harlem is website, www.harlem-is.org. Today's host is actress and popular TV host, Rena Valentin, the first Latina to receive the coveted Citizens Committee of New York Creative New Yorker Award. She's talking with acclaimed visual artist, Andrea Arroyo, whose works are widely displayed and is an important presence in both Harlem and Washington Heights. Before we begin though, here's my own tribute to the many visual artists that helped us heal. Harlem is a mosaic, a mural, always plural, a paintbrush wielded by those who refuse to hush. Harlem is healing, is art that goes beyond decoration. It demands your spirit's participation. It is gumbo, mafungo, arroz con pollo, west side to east, always a feast. It is capturing the sun-kissed daughters and sons of the Aztec, Taino, Arawak, Olmec, and Ashanti. It is El Barrio, the epitome of new world blended beauty. And when the pandemic storm swept through like a swarm, Harlem translated to the language of getting healing done. Soul meets soul because we are one. Forgive me if I pronounce this wrong, but remember, our hearts, mind, and actions, that's where it belongs. Remedia, Harlem is a remedy. Harlem is everything that you see and beyond. Harlem is healing, so we'll see you uptown as you become part of the mosaic. It's free to get down. Hey everyone, welcome to Harlem is Healing, a project of Community Works NYC and New Heritage Theater Group. My name is Rina Valentin, and today we are celebrating world-renowned artist Andrea Arroyo. Andrea is an award-winning internationally recognized artist in a range of media, including public art, painting, drawing, illustration, and site-specific installation for over 25 years. She is a committed cultural advocate and sought after speaker and lecturer who continues to highlight the social justice needs for healing within our society. Today, we will engage in a discussion of how art and social justice overlap. Everyone, please welcome Andrea Arroyo. Hola, Andrea. Hola, Rina. Gracias por tenerme. Thank you. Oh, gosh. Bueno, llegamos. Here we are. It's uh, the year 2021, July to be exact. We survived the COVID-19 pandemic after being sheltered in place for over a year. And now, as New York gradually reopens, can you share how your work has been impacted reflecting this particular era? Yes. So I have been doing that for a long time and using it really as a tool for social justice. It's, of course, it's a personal expression, but for me, it's really, really important to connect with other people and to share both my opinion about different situations in the world and also to share a sense of hope 
and to fight you know sadness to fight these connections so connecting with each other is important and i use my art to do that to create ne networks and to create connections and on a personal note how has your art served you well my art is everything so it's for healing is my work is my passion is my calling so it's basically my life art for me is both a healing working dreaming projecting uh, imagining the world as a better place and so while we do not have the time to go over your entire trajectory because you've been doing this so long and you're a highly documented artist um and it is my absolute honor to to even be sharing space with you um and particularly during this time in which you sort of found a way to serve as a uh, historian right because i mean i i want to say that your art does that anyway but this particular time you have really uh made it uh, uh an informative uh platform uh meaning uh, referring to your art and i'd like to talk about one uh well we'll start with the project covida in particular because covida which the name itself I also find very clever is a public art installation at the Morris Jamel uh, mansion, right? On the fence. And I know it was on display until January, 2021 in Washington Heights. And while it was kind of participatory because people were invited to participate, can you just share like the inspiration behind the style for the way you did it, the colors incorporated, and um, of course, uh, paying homage to the lives lost during the pandemic. You know, it was at the time that we were devastated, all of us, we were isolated. And I was just thinking, you know, the pandemic is gonna be with us for a long time. So how do we coexist with the pandemic and with each other, even in isolation? So I call it COVID, mixing COVID and Vida, life. And the museum invited me to, uh, to have this piece and uh, to do something about the pandemic. And I wanted to create a space for reflection for the community, a safe space. It was outdoors. It was during the time where there are no museums open, no galleries. So there was really no place uh, for gathering for people. It was very, very important for me that this place, the museum is an important space that connects past because it's a historical museum. Uh, with present and thinking of the pandemic and you know humanity has gone through several pandemics and for me that was very important honoring the history also the place stands in the land of the la, traditional land of the Lenape nation so that was also very important to me to recognize that and it's also in a place where there's a large uh, Latinx community I am Mexican it was very important to me to connect to that as well Day of the Dead, Dia de Muertos was my main inspiration. The colors come from uh, the Sempasuchil flowers, the orange uh, that is used in, in Mexican altars, but also taken from other traditions from uh, Asia and Thailand, where they use the same kind of colors for altars and for uh, funeral celebrations and for all kinds of uh, ceremonies. So it was that was uh, the idea. The black and white with the figures, I wanted to do something just reflecting life and death, you know, light and darkness, but also provided a sense of hope it was very important to me. The main reason was to honor the people who we lost, honor our essential workers, very, very important. And that create a, a space for the community to come together. The names were submitted from, you know, people from the neighborhood as well from all over the country, from Mexico, from Turkey, from France. Uh, so it was also a way to create an international community uh, during a time when, when we were so isolated. So for me, it was a really wonderful opportunity writing the names, uh, each one of the names that we received by hand for me provided a space for healing. Uh, it was a very meditative process, uh, a space to allow grief, you know, to flow, to be processed, and also a way to celebrate life to celebrate the, the life of the people who, whose name I was writing and the life that we have here and now, because we're still here. We had a lot of loss, a lot of sadness, but we need to celebrate the here and the now. 
So in writing all these names, do you remember how many of them you wrote? I wrote hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. We have lists, of course. Everything is recorded in an archive. What was that that call like, right? So you, you put out a, an open call for people to submit names. And you said it, it was an international open call. So how how is that managed, right? So they, they come to you and then you're writing them. That How long of a process was that as well? It was a long and mostly very intense process. Uh, the museum provided a lot of support. So they had a website and a, and a form, an online form that people will fill with names. And we also gave a space for people to, to write a little something about their, their lo loved ones. So that was important. So it, it was very hard. It was very healing at the same time. And for me, it was both providing a service to the community, a service to the international community, but it was healing for myself as well. You know, it was a lot of work, but totally worth it. Uh, well, I would imagine so. And and so where, where are all these names and ribbons now? So I have them in my studio right now. I'm planning to reinstall Covida in the next couple of weeks or couple of months. So hoping, hoping that the project will have a, a long life. Uh, because this pandemic is of, of historical proportions. And I think the project and the piece uh, are going to become an important artwork in terms of historical documentation and ex art expression. Absolutely. I think a lot of your work is going to be used in a lot of historic documentation. And so um, I want to jump into your other contribution, which, I mean, to date, right, we've lost uh, approximately 619,000 lives and still growing due to COVID. And now that we have the vaccination, people are hesitant to take it. And I know you have this COVID series illustration that kind of goes from pre-COVID to post-COVID where, okay, this is happening to us. And then now this is what uh, we should be addressing. So let, let's just talk about the visions you, you get when, when designing this kind of artwork. So for me, that series in particular is where information and inspiration kind of come together. So my, my idea is to provide in one image a very clear and concise message and share also a sense of hope and a sense of empowerment. Because the pandemic is here, there's not much we can do, but there is something we can do, right? So that something is about personal responsibility so for me, that was a way of expressing that and sharing that. Uh, it's also a way for, uh, for me to heal and to help or to provide some kind of a contribution for the healing of our communities. And when you say communities, uh, a lot of your work consists of using the globe and of course, identifying New York. I mean, one of the images I'm looking at is the earth with COVID around and a mask and the Statue of Liberty protecting her New Yorkers or shielding the New Yorkers as COVID is attacking, almost looking like little bombs, you know, little mini bombs. And and, the, and then it, it, it kind of like seeps into the now uh, where uh, as we are reopening uh, here in New York, there's this uh, hesitation with people taking the vaccination. And this particular image of the actual injection serving as a, an umbrella, I found extremely uh, fascinating because I had the pleasure uh, or the honor, I should say, of interviewing a doctor. And this was prior to the vaccination becoming accessible to all of us. And he was describing the vaccination as an umbrella because apparently the vaccination does not prevent you from getting COVID. What it does is it shields you as an umbrella would in the rain, should you contract COVID. And, and so I was curious to know if, did you ever have a conversation with a doctor prior to creating this particular piece? I did not, but I was doing a lot of research. Uh, like in all of my projects, I do a lot of research. I am very thorough in terms of the information that I share. I'm an avid reader and I was also very, very worried. So I was on top of all of the information that I could get. I was also in contact with uh, friends in Europe and they were uh, during the pandemic two weeks ahead of us. So they had information before we did. So I was getting that information a little bit earlier. 
so that was important. And for me, in terms of the, the umbrella and that image, I really wanted to have a very concise message. So for me, we have a few tools to fight the pandemic. Uh, you know, one are the masks, right? And the other one is the vaccines. So we have to use the tools that we have right now. They may not be perfect. Nothing is 100% sure, but those are the tools that we have. And for me, that's very, very important to share that message. And the thing is that it's not only about protecting ourselves, it's about protecting others. And a pandemic is not about an individual. It's really not, it's not a disease. It's about a community and a society and basically the world. So we need to think of others as well as we think of, of ourselves. So it's about safety for everyone. Yeah, and it's interesting that you keep referencing the community and in your artwork, you keep uh, in incorporating the globe because really what we're discussing here is our global community because this impacted everyone. Absolutely. And then there's this one image that I uh, forgot to mention, which is just this beautiful portrait of yourself standing in front of a, a Save Lives Stay Home piece that you created. And while it's simply drawn and simply stated, it is a huge message in which we all had to abide by for approximately 18 months. Yes, it was very important to me to inspire people to follow the guidelines that we were given. So in order to protect each other, we needed to shelter in place. And it was hard, it was very, very difficult. So I needed to do something that for me was inspiration for other people. So instead of feeling that we are isolated and that we are just not allowed to go out to do things, it was for me about making it a mission. Like, why are we home? It was very, very important to me for people to understand why we had to be home for so long. And so that was a way of expressing that. Just in absorbing and experiencing your work, because that's truly what it is. It's an experience. And the way you've documented this particular era from beginning to where we are now, right? Because right now we're, we're in the gradual reopening and we don't know what, what's going to occur now because now there's a Delta variant and, you know, it's, it's just, it's never ending. Um, uh, but it's almost as if though your work has been serving as public service announcements, you know, and obviously visually stimulating. And so you mentioned that you research information and that you're, you're basically working from this place of being informed. And as you know that, and you already have that, is that what allows you to surrender into whatever comes through you when you're crafting? I think so. I mean, we have to navigate life with what we have. We have to absorb and process what we have at the moment. So for me, it was, it really feels like a historic time and I needed to record it. I needed to, to make sure I can in five years, maybe go back and read what I was you know, feeling at the time, what I was trying to process because I think it's gonna take for all of us a long time. I think this is gonna be a really um, long-term process. There's gonna be a lot of trauma, you know, a lot of PTSD. It has been extremely difficult. So I use art to process. Yeah, but you've also been journaling as well through Facebook. And since you mentioned writing, I think this is an appropriate time for us to have this conversation about the detail within you, your documentation, especially what you've been doing uh, almost on a daily basis on Facebook. I mean, you've been documenting the stats of COVID cases, of deaths, of your mood, uh, uh, the particular incidents that are affecting us right now, such as, you know, we're heading into the 4th of July and the noise pollution and the impact that's having on our, our well-being, uh, aside from everything else that we have going on from being sheltered in place, our mental health being challenged. I, I mean, <laughs> let's just talk a little bit about why you chose to journal publicly. I did because I was feeling really isolated and I knew that many, many people were feeling isolated. 
I was also thinking that because we had such a tremendous loss, both you know individually and collectively, that it's hard to express our feelings sometimes. But this particular time, this particular pandemic, really called for me for a collective grieving or a collective processing. So for me, it was a way to connect, a way to express a, a message just clearly, a way to remind people that we were still in a pandemic, that you know people were still getting sick, where people were still dying, a way to provide information. And also for me, I was thinking of, of the future. I, you know, at some point I thought well, I could actually, I could die. Like you know, any of us could, you know, get sick and die. So I was um, wondering where to focus. And I, I, I decided to focus on tenderness, on human connection, because I thought, well, if I survive, maybe in five years, I can look back and understand what I was going through and what other people were going through as well. So I also focus on, on being grateful. Uh, you know, some of the things that I post posted every day was, you know, what I'm grateful for, what, you know, the things that were driving me crazy, you know, on that one particular day, and also the things that kept me relatively sane. If it's uh, okay with you, I'd like to read uh, the, well, it's one of the recent ones of Aphrodite. And it, yes, it's your mixed media on canvas. This is on Facebook. And uh, what we're referencing is the, the journaling that she uh, attaches to the images that she posts, which is uh, her, of her visual art. And so this is her words from a series, Flor de Vida, Women from History and Mythology. Aphrodite is the Greek goddess of love and beauty because love is beauty. Day 480 sheltering in love, things that keep me relatively sane, art, meditation, yoga, things driving me crazy, fireworks in New York City, what I'm missing most today, sleep, what I'm most grateful for today, pride, today's numbers, updating weekly to sort of keep my sanity, USA 34.5 million cases and 619 thousand deaths. New York City, 955,000 cases, uh, 33,406 deaths. Please take care, everyone. Sending love and virtual hugs. Today's freak out level four, rage level four, sadness level two, despair o meter two, with a beautiful image attached to it. That uh, despair o meter was, uh, was very well received by uh, by my audience uh, i think we were were all at different numbers you know during different days uh, but it's it's a way of making it you know human like making it real because it's uh, i didn't want to focus on numbers i didn't want to focus on just the devastation it's we are human beings you know things happen we navigate life with the tools we have and it's life it's life, and 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 that's a beautiful uh, sharing that that you've been providing uh, on a global level through Facebook. And so, uh, the image attached to it is this beautiful interpretation of Aphrodite. And, and I just want to share with everyone that you have these images of these women that are floating. You have one behind you. The one behind you has the sun inside of her, and it's the uh, I think your signature um, when it comes to identifying your artwork. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, this symbolism that is incorporated in pretty much all of your work. Yes. So I have been creating work about women for many, many, many years. My idea and my mission and my vision is to always celebrate the female spirit, celebrating you know, the life, the struggles and the triumphs of women all around the world, past and present also connecting uh, the experiences of women from the past with the experiences of, of women from contemporary life is very, very important. Thinking about resilience, right? Thinking about women always being in movement, always having to be flexible and creative, navigating life, uh, always moving forward. So there's no time for us to be still. We really need to keep moving, we move, we create, we live, we heal, 
So that's the idea, celebrating women and what we bring into the world. Which now leads me into the beautiful artwork that is displayed on Gun Hill Road in the subway stations, right? And so this is like stained glass art, but it's your flowing women. <laughs> it is, yes. So I was honored to have been chosen to have a permanent work of art in one of the subway stations in New York. Uh, it's a wonderful opportunity to have a connection with the local community and the idea to have my work there permanently is very, very moving. Sometimes I go and visit the station and I just like to look at people, how they look at the work, what they find. And stained glass is really a magical thing, you know, depending on the time of day, the time of year, it looks different, it shines differently. And it really, you know, keeps moving and growing in different ways. And you know, it was these things, the public art sometimes, you find different things at different times. You look at a, an artwork for, you know, a week and then the following week will find, you find something else that you didn't see before. So there's magic in that. So very, very proud of that project. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And I, and I hope people go and visit Gun Hill Road just to experience what you just shared. And I do also want to mention this other uh, installation that was done in a garden. And um, while it's the flowing women, in this particular one, you had them, painted them red-ish, like they, they look stained. And the way they were uh, mounted on the trees and the branches almost look like they belong there. Honestly, just absorbing the image, I almost saw the tree smiling, you know? Seriously, I, I, I was in awe with that installation. What garden was that? So I, I've been working with several gardens in the past. I think the ones that you're referring to is Maggie's Garden, probably, uh, here in Harlem. So for me, those opportunities are wonderful. I call them my collaboration with trees. So uh, I go in and I look at the trees and I try to listen to the trees and then create a project in a way that integrates nature and art uh, in a way that honors the space, that doesn't impact the trees, the nature or the garden in any way. So it's not about me just placing my work there, but it's rather a, a collaboration and it's about honoring these natural nature spaces that we have in the city that are oases, really. The other thing is, is, is to have art in public spaces. For me, it's very, very important. Bringing uh, my artwork into the public realm, you know, be, beyond the, the traditional gallery and museum exhibits that I have regularly. Uh, very, very important to me to engage with my audience in new ways, in different ways, to also have from provide art that is accessible to everyone and also art that is found in unexpected places. So that element is really, really sweet and lovely. And it's something that I really, really enjoy. So I, I gotta tell you, I'm a tree hugger. And, and, um, and so I honor the trees uh, as if though they were us, right? Because we are coexisting. And when I saw those images, I, I really absorbed the, that exactly what you're, you're saying. And not only the aesthetics, but the way they were carefully placed. You could tell that they were carefully placed to complement the tree, not bombard the tree. Absolutely. It's about coexisting. It's about honoring the space and also celebrate the green spaces that we have in the city because, you know, in New York City is packed with buildings and asphalt and it's, you know, harsh sometimes. And those spaces are really, really sweet and provide a wonderful uh, element to, to all of our communities. And they are really well loved and really well used by the community so it's been an amazing collaboration yes and and before we we move on to the next topic i just also want to just bring out the one that is on a vine wall uh, of greenery in in which they're kind of like meshed into it it almost looks like it's part of the wall it's a uh, women of the forest it's called i believe yes that's the women of the forest and that's in the herb garden in in east harlem and it's a beautiful English ivy wall. It's gorgeous. And when I went in, I just thought that was just the most beautiful setting. And I carefully installed each one of the elements, just very lovingly and carefully, just using just very gentle garden wire, 
because again, I wanted to honor that, you know, the force and the resilience of nature. It was really important. And that piece stayed there for a long time uh, with, you know, snow and with, you know, sunshine. And again, it's another way of looking at art in different ways, in different seasons. So it was a wonderful uh, opportunity. So let's just talk about your commissions uh, for publications as a visual artist. Yes, I mean, I do work in a lot of different mediums uh, from public art to painting, to murals, to illustration, to sculpture. And sometimes uh, different magazines, publications call me to commission work for a specific magazine cover or a book. Yes, I mean, the one, of course, that stands out for me is the New Yorker cover. And I understand that that really is from back in the 90s, yet it's so relevant to today. Yes. So as you can see, I was always, you know, trying to incorporate those values that we were talking about, uh, you know, the value of you know, caring for the planet, caring for each other, the value of solidarity and empathy, and again, celebrating life very, very important. So, you know, having those publications is another way for me to connect with a different audience, with a larger audience. And depending on the publication, it can be, you know, local or national, such as the New Yorker or international, even like the International Herald Tribune. And, and also the Latin Grammys, right? I want to talk a little bit about the fact that you also incorporate a lot of the elements, especially the sun. I noticed the sun presents itself a lot in your work as well. What is it about the sun? Uh, that really resonates with you? It's life. The sun is life. And it's also, you know, it's always in movement. When I paint the sun, like the sun rays are always dancing. So it's a way of, for me to, to create that movement. And for the Latin Grammys, Grammys I was uh, named uh, the official artist of the Latin Grammys and I was commissioned to do the image and the poster and they were printed on the tickets and the, all of the envelopes with the prize uh, names. So it was an interesting and very fun project. It's lovely that they just let you run with it too. Yes, it was, it was wonderful. The idea is to celebrate New York, the Grand School at that time, New York City. And uh, it was just, it was sort of wonderful. It was a very high profile project. Sometimes I do those kinds of things. And uh, it's a lot of fun just, you know, going to the red carpet and all of the parties and the events. And it's a different way to connect with people because as visual artists, uh, we don't have, always the ability to to connect with people in person we have an exhibition and then we you know people go on their own and they see the work uh, but it's, it's nice to actually connect with people in person as well yeah it's almost like uh, having a taste of the commercial world still honoring your uh, visual artistry mm -hmm. and also well you know the, the grammys have such an impact uh, worldwide that it was a really great opportunity and a really great way of uh, celebrating both new york and art. So I just want to say, like, if there were ever a time that uh, we there there was a need for global unity, it's now, right? And so, the multiple pandemics that have been presented uh, between climate justice, uh, injustices, I should say, racial bias, inequities, innocent deaths, Black Lives Matter, anti-Asian hate, uh, Me Too movement, femicide, voter suppression, uh, marginalized communities and the list can go on and on, but it's evident in your work that you're moved by these social justice issues. And yet there's a sense of, of, of resolve and peace. So what is it that goes through your mind while, while you're crafting and, and being mindful of the social injustices that are at stake? Yes, so I want to go beyond just pointing a problem. I, I want to go beyond that and try to actually solve a problem. Of course, you have to identify the problem first. That's you know, the main thing. But I really want to provide a sense of hope and a sense of mostly empowerment. Because many of these problems are huge problems. You know, the race issue, the gender issue, Me Too, all of the problems that you uh, mentioned are, are huge. And they could be overwhelming. Just thinking about it could be overwhelming. So my idea is to provide a sense of empowerment, of personal responsibility, of personal agency, really. So I create images that you know, provide the context, provide um, the information about an issue, but also, also that sense of hope. You know, and they fight 
despair, you know, the idea is to fight hopelessness. And really to foster a sense of solidarity and empathy. And, and uh, one of the things that really stands out, which obviously we've already discussed, is the fact that women are your primary subject mm -hmm. and elements, natural elements, right? The, the flowers, trees, earth, women. I keep going back to women because I, I, I don't really see men in your work. So are women the master healers from your perspective? They are. We are. Definitely. I choose to focus on women because that's what I feel like I'm here for. I am very familiar with, you know, women's issues. I was a dancer for a long time, so I'm very familiar with the female form as well. But the main thing is, is really to promote and to express universal values of you know, peace, equality, solidarity, justice. These very, very basic values. The other thing is that with women and with what I do is... I really, really believe that beauty is revolutionary. So celebrating joy and celebrating beauty changes the world. And you couldn't have said it better. That is the medicine. That right there is the medicine that we should all be applying into our everyday life. And thank you for being a mindful contributor to uh, just making sure that we have access to it. Thank you so much. Thank you. So just to have fun, um, I, I would like to uh, do some spitfire questions just to get to know you a little bit better. All right. You good? I'm ready. All right, let's do it. So real quick, coffee or tea? Tea. Shower or bath? Long baths. TV or reading? Reading, of course. I don't have a TV. Heels or flats? Heels and boots. <laughs> Uh, pants, PJs, or batas? Pants. <laughs> One piece bathing suit or two piece? Two piece all the way. And then for cultural purposes, tacos or burritos? Avocado and arugula tacos. Never a burrito. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much, Andrea Arroyo, for taking the time to just really share and enlighten us with uh, all of your creativity and uh, for shedding a light on all the matters that need to be addressed within our society and our global community. And you guys, I wanna thank you for celebrating Andrea Arroyo with us in Harlem is healing. I'm Rina Valentin, uh, reflecting, reimagining, rebuilding uh, a resolve for our reality through the art of love. Adios. Thank you so much, Rina. Thank you. Gracias a usted. Ay, qué bueno salió. On behalf of viewers and Barbara Horowitz of Community Works, Bulls and Rivers of the New Heritage Theater Group, special thanks to Rena and Andrea for this remarkable conversation. Please join us for more dialogues with community healers. Next up, a conversation with Reverend Michael A. Waldman senior pastor at First Corinthian Baptist Church, also known affectionately as Pastor Mike. Our community needs more healing. And we invite you to look for more profiles of those seeking to end hunger, joblessness, and hate on our streets. For more about the legacy of Harlem, please visit www harlem-is.org and www.instagram slash Harlem is Healing. Finally, thanks to our key funders who have made this possible. Con Edison, Humanities NYC, and Josh Horowitz. We'll see you uptown. Stay safe. And remember, when you come to Harlem, you become part of the artwork of Harlem.